Hey everyone, welcome to my fourth video in the Alkene Reaction Series. Today we'll be talking about halohydrin formations, which is the addition of your diatomic halogen molecules and water to an alkene. Here are some definitions for you to know. What is an electrophile? It's an atom that is electron rich and it has a positive charge. Sometimes it could carry a partially positive charge too, so just keep that in mind. Nucleophile, an atom that is electron rich. It is an electron pair donor. It can carry a lone pair or a pi bond, and it doesn't always carry a negative charge. Just like with these reactions, alkenes are going to be your nucleophiles. A bridged halonium ion, which is a positively charged halogen atom that bridges two of the carbon atoms. I'll go more in depth with that later on in the lecture. Markovnikov's rule. For unsymmetrical alkenes, the electrophile will attach to the less substituted carbon atom and the nucleophile will form a bond to the more substituted carbon atom for stability. And just remember what a carbocation is, which is an ion with a positively charged carbon atom. So here's the general idea of this reaction. Three bonds are going to be broken, the hydrogen to OH2 bond, the pi bond in the alkene, and the HOH bond in water. Two sigma bonds are going to replace your pi bond, the carbon to hydrogen bond, and the carbon to alcohol bond. Just for thermodynamic purposes, they're exothermic reactions, which means that the two bonds formed will release more energy and the energy needed to break the pi bond. Let's take a look at the general reaction. So you have an alkene with the pi bond. The pi bond is going to attack the positively charged halide. It's gonna break the bond between them and then expel your electrons back to the partially negative charged halide. Since we're reacting this in water, your product is going to end up having a halide and an alcohol bonded to it. You'll also have a negatively charged halide and a hydronium ion. Take note that your halide isn't fully positive in this halonium ion form. It does have an electron pull, therefore giving these carbon atoms a partially positive charge on each. Now, let's take a look at an example. Let's say you're reacting an alkene with two bromines. The pi bond is going to want to attack the positively charged bromine, break the bond, and expel the electrons to the partially negative bromine. And this is going to form our halonium ion. Because this is symmetrical, it doesn't matter which carbon we attack. Therefore, water will attack the left carbon atom and form a bond. And now notice that we have a positively charged oxygen atom that is highly unstable. Therefore, another water molecule is gonna come in, take a hydrogen, and then expel the electrons back to oxygen, giving you your final product. And notice that you have a hydronium ion forming, and you also have your negative bromine ion. So here's a good question. What about the negatively charged bromine atom? Why doesn't it attack one of these carbons during this stage instead of water? So one big thing to remember with these reactions is that they're being carried out in water itself, which is a polar project solvent. So you have very strong hydrogen bonds occurring and those hydrogen bonds will cause a block in your halide ion and prevents it from reacting with the halonium ion. So you can imagine something like this occurring. Let's, Let's say you have a methyl cyclohexene and you react it with a diatomic bromine molecule. The pi bond is going to take the positively charged bromine atom, expel the electrons to your partially negative bromine atom, and form a halonium ion. Now take note, when water attacks, it has an option between two carbons, a tertiary or a secondary. Due to Markovnikov's rule, the water molecule is going to attack the tertiary. 
in turn, you have a bond forming, and you now have a positive charge on your oxygen atom. Another water molecule is going to show up. It's going to take your hydrogen, and it's going to expel the electrons back to oxygen, giving you this as a final product. We'll talk about stereochemistry in a moment, but just take notice that your water molecule is going to do a backside attack on the holonium ion. Never does it do a frontside attack because of the fact that there's too much steric strain in this area. Take note that there is another way that you can form a bromohydrin. You can use n bromosucinide to also form a bromohydrin as long as it's in DMSO and H2O. Your DMSO is going to just be another polar protic solvent. And so the reason why a lot of people like to use NBS is because it provides a low concentration of bromine for you to do your reactions. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have a cyclohexene and you react it with NBS. The pi bond is going to take your bromine. It's going to break the bond between the bromine and the nitrogen, giving you a holonium ion. Oops. And now giving a negative charge to the nitrogen. But then after this, the reaction proceeds as normal, where your water molecule is going to attack one of the carbons. In this case, since this is symmetrical, it doesn't matter which one. And you will end up with the final products. So we're about to start talking about stereochemistry soon. But for now, just know that in a bromohydrin reaction, the products are going to be added in a transform. One thing to keep in mind with these reactions is that you can have different types of polar product solvents and still have the same mechanism occurring. Like for example, you can use alcohols in these kind of reactions. So let's take a look at the next example. Let's say we use ethanol as a polar product solvent. The reaction will proceed as normal, where the pi bond is going to take your partially positive halide, the bond will break, and the electrons will go to your partially negative halide. In turn, you'll have a holonium ion form, and now your ethanol has an option between attacking the tertiary carbon or the secondary carbon. Due to Markovnikov's rule, the ethanol will attack the tertiary for more stability. And in turn, you will form a bond. And now your oxygen atom is positive. So another ethanol molecule will come up. It will take the hydrogen and it'll expel the electrons back to oxygen giving you the final product. And take a look that this is an ether that was formed. Now, let's take a look at the stereochemistry of this reaction. As I have briefly stated before, your halide and your alcohol group will form bonds in an anti-fashion. Let's look at exactly how that happens. Let's say you have this alkene and you react it with Br2 and H2O. Your products will add on the bromine and the alcohol group, but on opposite sides. Pertaining to this symmetrical alkene, you'll have two enantiomers form. With unsymmetrical alkenes, you have the possibility of two constitutional isomers forming, but due to Markovnikov's rule, only one will be formed. So for instance, with this unsymmetrical alkene, Let's say you react it with Cl2 and H2O. This will be your only product. Why? Because the alcohol group will want to bond to the more stable carbon atom. Now I want you guys to try out an example. Okay, so we got a lot of things going on here. Let's say we have this isopropyl pentane and we're reacting it with Cl2 H2O. The reaction will proceed as usual where the pi bond is going to attack the chlorine atom, form a holonium ion, and then your water molecule is going to attack the more stable carbon atom. So it has a choice between your 
tertiary carbon or your secondary which one do you think it will attack it's going to attack the more stable carbon atom due to markovnikov's rule so now a bond forms between the carbon and the oxygen and now the oxygen bears a positive charge and it doesn't like that so another water molecule will come and take one of the hydrogens the bond will break expel the electrons back to oxygen and you will end up with your final product. Let's take a look at another example. So this reaction will proceed as usual. You will have the pi bond attack the partially positive chlorine atom. The bond will break between both and the electrons will go to the partially negative chlorine. In turn, you'll have a halonium ion form and then the water molecule is going to attack the more substituted carbon atom and form a bond. And now your oxygen atom has a positive charge on it. So now another water molecule will come and take one of the hydrogens. It'll break the bond and give the electrons back to oxygen and give you your resulting product. Note that the alcohol group and the halide were added on in anti-fashion. And now you also have a halonium ion as a result. So let, let me just go back to the other equation because I don't even think I put in the halonium ion. Look at me forgetting. This is one of the most important things to know. All right, so that is it for my video. Like and subscribe if this helped you. And leave some comments below. Let me know what other type of things you want to see on my channel.